Your phone can be a tool to help fight this coronavirus pandemic nightmare. At least that's what some tech companies are hoping. Bluetooth technology can keep track of who's been exposed to COVID-19. But can a little radio Bluetooth ping from your phone really get us back to some resemblance of a normal life? In the face of the global pandemic, Apple and Google are doing something they almost never do, work together. Beginning next month, Apple and Google are releasing software. The two companies will roll out a contact tracing system. We'll use Bluetooth to help notify someone if they've been in contact with someone who's infected. On April 10th, the companies announced a new project to halt the spread of the novel coronavirus. It's a system for automatically and autonomously logging all the people you've been in contact with. So if one of those people gets diagnosed with coronavirus, you'll get an alert saying you've been exposed and should quarantine. So everything I'm talking about here is a high-tech version of a low-tech classic pandemic fighting tool called contact tracing. And please, I need every person that is African from wherever you are, whether you are in Africa or you are outside of Africa, I need your undivided attention. We are using Nigeria as a case study, but believe me, it is not just about Nigeria. Nigeria is their blueprint, and they're going to replicate it in almost every country in Africa, except for those who have presidents that are ready to lay down their lives for their people. This is, this is, this is like the dawning of totalitarianism. I've been screaming about this all along. The Antichrist is here. Have you heard about contact tracing? What do you know about contact tracing? Contact tracing. What do you know about it? Chances are your government in your own countries in Africa have already held meetings and made decisions on this over your head and you don't even know it yet. Okay, so we're going to go deep down. There was something that happened that has never happened before. On April the 10th, 2020, Apple and Google came into a partnership that had never before been seen. Apple and Google they are the biggest in the world. They control every single phone, almost every single mobile phone, mobile device you see on earth today. It's either on Apple iOS or on Google's Android. You are either Apple iOS or you are Android. Check it as you're listening to me now. Check your hands. Check the phones you're using right now to even listen to me. It's either an Android phone or an Apple iOS phone. So these are the two biggest in the world. Before they became the two biggest, there was the BlackBerry. Remember BlackBerry Passport and all those BlackBerry phones? They were adjudged to be the safest, most secure phone in the world. Do you remember how they faced BlackBerry out? As soon as they faced BlackBerry out and kicked it out of the way, I had a, a live Facebook program in which I told the people to watch out that these people did this thing intentionally for a purpose in the future to control everybody. It's happening right now. And so, to get back to what I was saying, on April the 10th, 2020, Apple and Google came into a partnership. They say Apple and Google partner on COVID-19 contact tracing technology. Contact tracing technology. I will read you what they said in their release. Across the world, governments and health authorities are working together to find solutions to the COVID-19 pandemic to protect people and get society back up and running. Software developers are contributing by crafting technical tools to help combat the virus and save lives. In this spirit of collaboration, Google and Apple are announcing a joint effort to enable the use of Bluetooth technology to help governments and health agencies 
reduce the spread of the virus with user privacy and security central to the design. <laughs> so he says, since COVID-19 can be transmitted through close proximity to affected individuals, public health officials have identified contact tracing as a valuable tool to help contain its spread. This was announced jointly by Google and Apple. Coming together for the first time over COVID-19. And we have had flu, seasonal flus. We have had viruses, Ebola, SARS, whatever. Why is Corona different? They are coming to do something that has never been done. They're going to create an app. But before I take you to the app they are creating, which is already functional in Wuhan, China, which I featured in one of my videos, let me take you to the commercial that they put out. I won't play the video, but I will take you to the graphics uh, version of the commercial that they put out to the world. So that you can understand what contact tracing really is about. And this is what I always want to do to connect the dots for you. Because I know that when you hear this big grammar, our people find it difficult to really comprehend what they are saying. So let me help you to make sense of it. So I put the diagram on the screen. It starts with privacy safe contact tracing using Bluetooth low energy. Explicit user consent required. It doesn't collect personally identifiable information or user location data, indeed. List of people you've been in contact with never leaves your phone, okay? People who test positive are not identified to other users, Google or Apple, mm. will only be used for contact tracing by public health authorities for COVID-19 pandemic management, for instance, CDC, NCDC, and all the CDCs, all the DCs. That you have in your countries and so doesn't matter if you have an android phone or iphone works across both <laughs> okay so here is how to help you understand what contact tracing really is all about it says here in this diagram one it says ellis and bob meet each other for the first time and have a 10 minute conversation Bob is positively diagnosed for COVID-19 and enters the test result in an app from a public health authority. Okay? Their phones exchange anonymous identifier beacons, which change frequently. A few days later, with Bob's consent, his phone uploads the last 14 days of keys for his broadcast beacons to the cloud. Now, the other image says, Alice continues her day unaware she had been near a potentially contagious person. Then, Alice sees a notification on her phone. And what does the notification say? It says, Alert, you have recently been exposed to someone who has tested positive for COVID-19. Tap for more information. And when she taps for more information, what does she get? Alice's phone periodically downloads the broadcast beacon keys of everyone who has tested positive for COVID-19 in her region. A match is found with the Bob's anonymous identifier beacons. Alice's phone receives a notification with information about what to do next. I'm going to go through this diagram again to break it down for you exactly what is going on. So, diagram one, Alice and Bob meet each other for the first time and have a 10-minute conversation. So, Alice and Bob, they're sitting down, meeting each other, talking, right? And they're just having a conversation. And then after that, Alice goes her way. Bob goes his way. And then all of a sudden, we see Bob is positively diagnosed for COVID-19. And he enters the test result of his diagnosis in an app, which is the app that Google and Apple are going to make. And the app is actually ready as I'm speaking to you. We're going to get to that very soon. Okay, so he, re he registers diagnosis in the app from a public health authority. So when he registered the diagnosis into the app, what happens next? We see this other one where it says, their phones exchange anonymous identifier beacons, which change frequently. So when Alice and Bob were sitting down having the conversation in diagram one, 
The phones were actually having a, a handshake through their Bluetooth connections. So I'm sitting down, say I am Bob, and this other person is Alice, and we are sitting talking. Our phones are sitting on our laps or wherever they may be. Two of the phones have crossed boundaries to go and shake hands. They have actually collected information from each other. So my phone has taken, collected the information of the, of the keys. In other words, taking the DNA, the, the phone DNA of Alice has been collected by my own phone. And my phone DNA has been collected by Alice's phone. And so, all of a sudden, when this was happening, Alice and I didn't know that all of this were going on. But eventually, suddenly, Bob now tests positive and enters his diagnosis into the app that was sent by, say, for instance, NCDC. Okay? Because the two phones were already collecting information from each other through the Bluetooth, what happens next? A few days later, with Bob's consent, his phone uploads the last 14 days of keys for his broadcast beacons to the cloud. Now, what happens here is that because Bob's phones has been collecting the DNAs of all the phones that he met, which is what they call the keys, right? The phone has been collecting it. What will now happen is that they say it is with his consent that all those D phones that he come in contact with, okay, for, for instance, for the past 14 days, uh, I am Bob. I came in contact with Shengun. I came in contact with Uche. I came in contact with Lucy. I came in contact with F Can you imagine all the people I came in contact with? And most of them had either iPhone uh, a device or they had an Android device. All those devices they had, my phone has information of their DNAs. And so my phone then suddenly takes all their phone information and sends it to the cloud which is only accessible by the health officials, NCDC. So it is in the database of NCDC that I actually met with Lucy, I am met with Shego, and I met with Obi in the last 14 days. So CDC will look at the data and say, oh, look at all these phones had come in contact with this Bob who is now tested positive. So what happens next? Alice! who is the first victim that sat beside Cobb now, Alice continues her day unaware she had been near a potentially contagious person. She just did not know. She didn't know that Bob would test positive or anything. But then, because Alice is continuing her day not knowing, what, does, what happens to Alice afterwards? Remember, the information about Alice's phone has already been sent to NCDC database through the upload from Bob's phone, which went to the cloud. Do you remember? Now, in the next diagram, look what it says. It says, Alice sees a notification on her phone. The notification goes, pim, pim, pim. You open it. What does it say? It says, alert. Uh, you have recently been exposed to someone who has tested positive for COVID-19. Alice goes, wow, how? What happened? She doesn't understand. She is confused. And then what happens in the next diagram? It says, Alice's phone... Alice's phone periodically downloads the broadcast beacon keys of everyone who has tested positive for COVID-19 in her region. A match is found with, the, with Bob's anonymous identifier beacons. Now, here's what happens. Because Alice is suppressed, she doesn't know what happened. There's a signal in the other diagram that says, tap for more information. The moment she taps for more information, her phone just goes ahead to download all the uh, broadcast beacons of people who have tested positive in the region where Alice is located. So it's not just Bob alone, but for all the other people who have tested positive, her phone instantly downloads them, and when it downloads it, it begins to look for a match. At that moment, Alice will notice that the phone has just found a match and it will fall on Bob's phone. That this person who owns this phone is the one who actually has tested positive for COVID-19 and was with me. But the name of Bob is not showing because it is an, an anonymous uh, beacon. So Bob's name does not show, but Alice at least can find that, look, truly, I actually was with somebody who had tested positive for COVID-19. So she will find the match. And now that she has found the match, you know what happens? It is assumed that she now has the virus. So what happens to her phone next? That's the last diagram. It says, Alice's phone receives a notification with information about what to do next. 
You know what that information is? Hey, Hollis, uh, I think you need to self-quarantine immediately. Now, the NCDC, for instance, if it was in Nigeria or if it is Nigeria, will not download all kinds of information to you as you how on how you have to self-quarantine. You don't have to go out of your house. You don't have to go to the supermarket. You don't have to step out. You don't have to even get into a taxi or anywhere at all. Just stay locked down on self-imprisonment in your own home. This is what is about to happen, not next year, in the month of May of 2020. This thing is ready for use. I know you're thinking to yourself, I bet is Nigeria a part of it? Is Nigeria accepted to do it? I will prove it to you right now. This is something that can easily be manipulated by a computer system. It is manipulated. That's why the video I showed you about the young man in Wuhan, he said he just saw his phone, just came up with red, that he has COVID-19. And so he was denied access to his office. He could not go anywhere. He stayed in his house. He said when the thing turned green, he didn't know what happened because he didn't do anything when he turned red and he didn't do anything when he turned green. Which means that you actually don't have to do anything. You actually don't necessarily have to enter the, uh, your whatever, your diagnosis into the app. In the long run, the Bluetooth low energy is going to read your energy just like the cryptocurrency thing they have created. Read your energy and say, oh, this person has COVID-19 and it will transmit the information to them. But what if you're well and get a red code anyway? This man says he's self-isolated while visiting Anhui province near Wuhan and back home in Shanghai. But there's no way to challenge the technology. Our office building here, you need to register. You need to show the code to demonstrate that you're healthy. So when I was red, there was no way I could go to the office and work. I didn't do anything. Then after two or three days, I looked and suddenly it was green. I don't know why. And they will isolate you. But it is not about self-quarantining that we're talking about. What they are calling self-quarantining is deceptive. It's very deceptive and I'm going to prove it to you right now. So all of this was announced on April 10. What has happened in May? Uh, May 21, 2020, NHS Contact Tracing App. How does it work and when can you download it? The NHS Contact Tracing App could help lift the lockdown measures. So you see how they are putting this across. Remember what I just read you about Apple, the, the press release by Apple and Google. You know what they said? They said uh, to protect people and get society back up and running. And so they are making it look like if we don't agree to use the contact tracing apps, or if we don't agree to the whole idea of contact tracing, that the whole lockdown we are experiencing around the world now is never really going to be lifted. So this is what is holding lockdown from being lifted in Nigeria, which I'm going to prove to you in a minute. So if you are in an African country where the lockdown has still not been completely lifted, this is what they are waiting to introduce to people before they can now lift the lockdown. In other words, they already have the right to capture you and put you in prison, in detention. And you will see it now. What did he say here? He says, with Britain in lockdown, the government has been racing to find ways to ease restrictions without putting public safety at risk. One solution is a contact tracing app that can enable digital contact tracing on a large scale. On May 4, May 4, the government revealed further details of the app, which will be tested on the Isle of Wight and then launched to the rest of the UK by the end of the month of May. If it proves successful, well, it did prove successful. So the app went live on the island on May 5. So if you are in the UK right now, this app is live and it actually went live on May 5, 2020. Yes, 2020. 
The UK is planning to use trained teams to find people who have coronavirus symptoms, working with the army to make thousands of calls a day to track the spread of COVID-19, all of which will be complemented by the contact tracing app. Now, it comes down here. What did they say? It said a contact tracing app is designed to let people know if they have been in close contact with someone who later report positive for COVID-19. I just explained that to you. It could pinpoint exactly who needs to be in quarantine and who doesn't, making it key to easing up social distancing measures. The purpose of the contact tracing app is to try and track down people and alert them of the need to self-isolate faster than traditional methods. You see what I'm telling you? The only way they can ease the social distancing measures that is now killing people and stifling people and, and making people go hungry and lose their jobs is if you allow this to happen. This is it right here. The purpose of the contact tracing app is to try and track down people and allow them of the need to self-isolate faster than traditional methods. What is the traditional method? Calling people on the phone. Let me show you how the traditional method works. Watch. So the only symptoms that we have on board right now is just the mild body pain. Is that correct? At a call center in Fairfax County, Virginia, outside Washington, employees with the public health department are doing contact tracing for the virus. And at any moment, were you admitted into the hospital? Doing this sort of detective work will be key to getting the country moving again testing widely, isolating those who are infected, contact tracing, and quarantining the contacts. That's a box. You get those four things right, you can keep a virus in the box so we can come out more readily. Okay, you see that? So the UK, in, in Fairfax, Virginia, USA, they've already started with this manual, traditional method of calling people and asking them, who were you with? And who did you touch? And who did you read? Where did you visit? And blah, blah, blah. All that is nonsense. It's a way of preparing the ground. You are telling me that in May, you are doing contact tracing by phone call when Apple and Google had already in April decided to manufacture an app that will be ready in May, but you have already started with your manual, traditional way of calling contact. If you call a contact and say, who have you been with? How can they give you accurate information? What if they have been close to somebody who they didn't know before, but the person had a phone? How will he be able to know? If I walk on the street, do I know everybody who's around me where I went to? Or people who stay close to me for like six minutes, six minutes or 10 minutes or whatever? If, I, I don't know who they are, but they were close to me. So how am I supposed to report that? You already know that the system is flawed, but because they always use the Illuminati codes, either problem, reaction, solution, or they use order out of chaos. In this case, they want to use the other one, which is order out of chaos. They, are, they know too well that manually or traditionally calling people, calling the contacts to trace them is a complete chaos. So they want to show that to you so the whole world can see that this is not feasible, it's not accurate, it's not working, it's not going to help. So that you will not be the one to say, no, let's stop doing this if we really want to get this thing right. Let us use the apps that the two cell phone, two mobile phone giants are going to give to us, Apple and Google. Order out of chaos. Order of chaos. Problem, reaction, solution. They created, they should let you see the problem. Oh my goodness, no, this is not going to work if we're going to really have to leave this whole lockdown. Let's go with this. And then you demand the same thing that they had already planned to give to you long before this whole topic came to the mainstream. The same NHS that I featured in my recent documentary on London 2012 London Olympics predicting coronavirus. The same NHS, they already have the app. And they went live. And now that the app went live on May 5, what do you think is going on in the UK now? Before the app, app went live on May 5, there was something else that happened 
in April that many people in the UK are not aware of. And I'm really not surprised that all this is happening in the UK because after all, what is the meaning of Corona? Corona means crown, the crown. <laughs> so UK is leading the way in every single totalitarian objective of this Corona. Ah, they are leading the way. But they are keeping it so low-key that you don't even get to see it in the media. Of course you would never see it in the media. I want you to look at this video and see what they had already applied, the laws they have put in place as way back as April 27, I guess. Watch. I want to thank all of you who follow us on YouTube. You know, my YouTube page is more like a community of people who are just awake or people who want to be awake in these times. We are building a new kind of community for this end time. And I believe that it has pleased the Lord to let me lead that community. And so every time I see a new person subscribe, I'm very, very excited. I feel so happy. You don't know how much I love you guys. You don't know how much I get. Somebody says, oh, do you actually read all the comments? Sometimes I read the comments and when I read, I enjoy every bit of it. I really love you guys with all my heart. And I will ask you to please, if you have not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And also click on the notification button so that whenever I upload a new video, you can be among the first people, you know, to watch it. Of course, you're going to get a notification, you know, and there's so many other uh, videos we are going to be uploading in the next few days and weeks. And I bet you can wait to see those. So I love you and I thank you so much. And of course, I also want to let you guys know that if you guys, I'm trying to build a partnership team. And if you want to be a part of that team, please write me an email because you know, most of the videos I put on YouTube, nearly all of them are either demonetized or blocked or kicked out or given limited monetization. So I really don't do my videos because of money. I can't tell you how much I've ever made from YouTube. If I was making videos for YouTube for money, I'm telling you most of the things I, I you know, I expose to you guys, I would never be able to do those because I don't get any money from them. Nobody wants to advertise on those videos, but you get to benefit from those videos. And that's what I care about the most. So if you want to partner with us, it wouldn't be a very bad idea at all. And if you want to also support what we do, I'm asking you to do that as well. And we're going to provide some links that you can use to do that. And now I want you to take this from me. I love you with all my heart. I do not take your patronage. For granted i do not take the fact that you subscribe and follow me for granted from the bottom of my heart i want to let you know that i appreciate you and i love you and please keep me in your prayers always again don't forget to subscribe and click the notification button i love you take care bye bye